Hey everyone, welcome back to The Board Game Critic. I was going to do a really quick episode on one of my most underrated games, in my opinion. So this is Martinique, and we're gonna do a quick playthrough. I do really enjoy the game. I don't know if it's still in print. I don't know if you can find it, so don't get your hopes too high. But this game is a little two-player game that I think is one of the most underrated games. Let's go ahead and have a look at the components. In here, we have our little map tokens. The map tokens indicate either a number or a letter. Oh, there's letters, there's a number. So those are of course the latitude and longitude on the map. What we're trying to do is discover where on the island the treasure is buried. So we represent two different ships of pirates. You can see one player's on this side, one player's on this side. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these map tokens and divide them into two piles. Then once we have them separated, we're going to flip them face down, shuffle them up, and draw one of them out to be the location of the letter and the number Where the treasure is buried. So let's go ahead and grab that one and this one. We'll set those off to the side, say right over here. Of course making sure not to look at those or to peek at any of these. We now want to shuffle all of these together. And place them scattered throughout the island. Then over here on the side, we have three different treasure chests, and those will be our small treasures. So we'll go ahead and populate those. In order to load a small treasure into your ship, you have to, you must acquire uh, these items that are shown. All right, the black pirates go first. What you do at the beginning, you have four pirates and a score marker. Now the rule is you have to offload at least three pirates onto the island before you can begin exploring. So the black player will take theirs first and you can place it anywhere on this outer side you are going to collect the first the token that you move off of. Every time you move, when you move off of a tile, you are going to take that tile and add it to your supply. So starting with the Black Pirate, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a corner just to get those pieces of the map. Let's go ahead and go place all of these. Okay, so to explain how movement works, you can see on this, there's a little two. That means in order to move off of this, I have to move exactly two spaces away. So I place the black pirate there so that I can get to this uh, piece of the map directly after. These two pirates you can place on as part of your turn at any time, but you don't have to do it right away. You can wait. The other thing to be aware of is there is a jumping mechanic, kind of like in checkers. If at any point you jump another person's pawn, they have to reveal one of their collected map pieces, so they have to turn it face up for the remainder of the game. So let's go ahead and start with the black player, and you'll kind of see how the map devolves. There's one other place, so this center is the hook. It's the tavern where we'll all meet after. So pirates will leave the island when they either land on a blank space where one has been removed, this pirate were to end his turn right there, he would come over here and sit at the bar. 
Now the bar is important because this is the order in which you will guess for treasure location. Who's there? This center area, the hook, um, if you land on one of these four center spaces, you automatically go to the bar, but you also get one of the treasures that's inside. So these three are obviously additional map uh, clues, and then these three are wild tokens to help you collect small treasures. So let's go ahead and play. It'll be in a bit of fast motion, and I'll probably pause for a couple uh, key moments in the game. So let me point out really quick, I decided to add my fourth pirate to the map here because he was about to jump onto this tile at which point I could have just jumped him and had him reveal one of his own. So I placed it there. I also placed it there because the black player only needs a parrot in order to collect this treasure over here. So at the end of each round, you will check to see if you qualify for any of these. If you do, you collect them and place them in the hull of your ship. So it's the end of the black player's turn and they have a parrot, a skull, and a treasure chest. So they will discard these back to the bag, collect these three, and place them face down in their ship. And then we'll draw out three new tiles. Oh, that's interesting. So red has decided to go over here and get this piece of the map, however black is lying in wait. Black has the choice to either jump red and have red expose one of their tiles, or he could come over here and get this piece of the map. Black is going to be a little bit more aggressive, jump over here and force red to expose an 8. So now everybody knows that the treasure is not in column eight. So Black has now acquired both the treasure chest and the keg, which is the qualifications for this first treasure, so he will take those and load them into his hole. has the qualifications for this first treasure. At the end of his turn, he will take those, load them into his hole. The treasures will be refilled. Ooh. It's now Black's turn. Black is realizing that he is n does not have near as many clues even though he has jumped red. So he's going to go one, two, three, and end his turn in the bar and hopefully get a jump on red by having the first guess. And he did end on, he started on this one, if I'm correct. So he qualifies for this treasure. Be placed in the hole. Two more will come out. Oh, wow. There are not many swords on here, so they all ended up in the small treasures. So pirates are capable of moving through blank spaces, such as that. If they just cannot land on an empty space, otherwise they will jump to the tavern.
Red now has the qualifications for the largest of the treasures. Also, Red has the qualifications for, he actually has the qualifications for any of the treasures. So, he can choose, he'll turn in these two to take these and place them in the hall. You can only collect one small treasure per round or per turn. So Black has given in and given, taken his last pirate to the bar. So let's check if he has any qualifications for these small treasures, which, so if he turns in those two, he can get the small treasure. So at this point, Red has the pirates left on the island. Red can take their turn as long as they wish collecting small treasures. So even if Red does not want to use the wild, he is required to. If at any point your pirate does meet the requirements of one of these, he is required to collect it. He or she, I'm a huge fan of female pirates. Here's a good example of a pirate that just cannot make a legal movement without sending it to the bar. So eventually pirates will get cornered and they'll have to jump off and take their place at the bar stool. Forgot to refill these. Pirates are not able to backtrack or set foot on the same space that they have the same turn so you could not go one there are it's only one two and three so the situations are rare but you cannot backtrack no diagonal moves are possible as you've probably seen so collect his last one which is the skull sending him to the bar and i actually think he does qualify for one last treasure in there go here so this is where the game gets really interesting so the red pirate finally got that last treasure so the scoring happens before you actually find the very treasure so the way scoring happens is there are two points for the play to the player who has the most so red would go up to two so you flip these over Black would get three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. So you get the number of victory points indicated by the tile. I'll go ahead and total those up real quick. Then finally, the players will get two points for each set of identical tiles in their supply. So black player would get two, red player would get one, or two, four, six, eight. So at this point, you can see where the game stands. The red player is winning pretty handsomely. However, that does not mean the game is over. If the black player, since he guesses a lot earlier than the red player, if the black player can guess where the buried treasure is, he can steal the win out from under the red player. So the black player is going to go ahead and look at his. I'm gonna try and do this as impartially as I can. And based on that information, that gives the red player actually quite a bit to look at. So if he can assume that the player would not waste one of his guesses misleading, 
the red player can see one, four, uh-oh. It also doesn't have the number three, is what he's thinking now. So he's gonna guess G, because he does not have a G, but he does think it's in the third row. Oh, I had the wrong one. Our black player thinking he is onto something, but he knows that G is wrong. He's going to continue down the line. E. Oh, he gets another guess. So it is possible for a player to have multiple guesses in a row, which this might actually work out for the black player. Also gonna take D. The red player knows it's not B, or knows it's not C. It could be B. He'd probably go B. He now knows that the black player has sunk way too much into this strategy, so he's a little bit worried that there are so many on here. But it's gonna go back over to black player. I don't think he has H, does he? He doesn't have H, so he would guess there, and then the red player would probably take in the last two slots. So we're pretty well guaranteed to have found <laughs> the treasure by this point. It's generally not this wild, just when the first player guesses one and the second player knows they don't have that one, uh, it gets a little bit targeted. So we go ahead and flip these over and it is D3. So the black player will have found the buried treasure and win, even though red had the higher score. An alternate way to play is to, uh, instead of just saying this is the win case scenario, just say this is worth 20 points, and that actually makes it pretty interesting too, because this would jump up to 38, which would just be a pretty, pretty narrow win, like a seven point win. That is Martinique. If you like fairly aggressive two player games, this will, this is a great one. I love the pirate theme, it's super fun and my, me and my wife have never fought so bad as over this game. <laughs> um, it was a very similar situation to this, me being the red player, her being the black player, and she just had committed to having earlier guesses, and I had committed to having more clues, and her first guess won her the game. So that's Martinique, and I hope, I hope you find some value in it like I do. Um, obviously, it hasn't hit anything huge, but great game in my opinion, and I do recommend it.